Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and today we're working at the gold mine again. So I got sick and tired of carrying all my supplies up and down this hill, so I ended up putting in an aerial tram here, and that allows me to pull up material from the truck, or send ore down to the truck, without having to hike it up and down this hill. And right now we're bringing up these wooden rails, and we're going to put a real little wooden rail system in down to the spot we're working, and then be able to pull up our buckets on this wooden rail system and then send them right down to the truck. So I'm, I'm working my way out of moving buckets up and down these hills. All right guys, we're underground and uh, we're getting our rails set up so we can work our buckets up this stope on a little cart. There's a couple of guys helping me put the rail system in. But we just got uh, two two by fours with some two by four cross pieces. And uh, I'm gonna make a little a little cart thing. It's just going to run right on those rails, and uh, with a rope I'll be able to pull up the buckets all the way up there. I don't know if you can see the light coming out of the portal, but there's the portals right up there. And this is where it goes up the stope, but we got to be we got to be able to. Oh, you can't see anything here, but um, we got to be able to come up through here which has rail in it now that we're actually just going to use. I'm going to reuse this rail. Here's one rail right here, and here's the other rail right over here. It's kind of covered in muck. There it is. So I'll make a little cart to push along this rail, and we're going to be working back here in this dope. I showed you on a previous video, but we'll take a quick walk back in here. Here we're walking down our rail system. This is the old rail they put in in the teens. And back here, this, this is the area that we've identified as being real rich. And here's the, here's the vein here. And we're going to come down and plan it on next year to blast some of this vein out and muck it out and up to the top and then we'll send it down to the truck uh, and then we'll take it off and get it milled but um, we got quite a bit of muck in here now that needs to be taken out all this stuff here we've done a couple little shots already this year this is our uh, our blasting stuff that we've shot with and then here's a look at our vein we're working and uh, this is this is actually real rich right in here. There's um, actually a lot of visible gold in the quartz. And uh, we've done a couple little shots, made a little bit of muck here. Um, but that's our plan. And so let me get back and we'll get a closer look at what these guys are doing with the rail here. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Is that enough? You want one more on my side? Yeah, we can get another one there. So what do we got here? We got oh, there's our last wire. Yeah, what do you want to you want to do a leg in the middle here too somewhere? We got a pretty long. There we go. But here's from the top looking down our our little rail system here, and it goes down to the bottom. And we can do it all in one straight shot, so there won't be any curves or nothing. Yeah, get her wedged in there and <laughs> more wood, <laughs> more wood. And you can just, if if you want, you can put it high, and I can cut it off. Okay, that's right. that's easy. That's good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. Yeah, keep her on the outside edges, and we'll get her cut off. And here's where we're at. And there's where we're going, right up there to the light. So I don't know. What is that, another 50 feet maybe? We'll get here. 
take a look back. We're, we're kind of, each one's a unique piece here. But it's sure going to beat packing those buckets up out of there. Oh, screws? Yeah, I got screws up here. Let me get the screws here for you. This is live action. Mine timber in here. All right, I got the screws. What did we put in? Ten of these things or so? And we used our tape measure for the first time, so that's... That's not That's how you... That's, that's how a miner does timber work. But yeah, we got a rail coming up where you have to kind of gap over this little section. But we're getting our way up. We're getting, getting closer. Probably another four to go until we're up to our hole there. Hell yes. All right, we're getting close. We're up here towards the daylight, maybe two more, and then we'll be up here to where we can start sending buckets down to the truck. Been working on it for about two hours, guys. Got all 15 done in two hours. All right, guys, just finishing up our rail here. We got her up there to the portal where we can unload. And here it comes down right past our feet. We spanned our, our little uh, gap there, and then it dives over the hill down to that rail. I don't know if I look down there. I don't know if you guys can see down there, but there it is at the bottom. 15 pieces of this wooden rail we made, uh, all 10 feet long, so we went 150 feet. Took us about two and a half hours. And uh, now we can go down there and muck some of that ore. We'll get a little cart and a rope to slide up these rails and uh, we'll get it down to the truck. So that'll be our next step. All right, so we got our wooden rail system in and we're down here uh, in this ridge zone of the vein. And right now, I'm uh, working along the ground here. I'm just hand mucking some stuff. We're putting it into buckets here. And uh, once we get uh, once we get about 10 buckets, we'll slide them down the rail on a little sled that I made, shoot them up the wooden rail out to the portal, and then we'll send them down to the truck on our aerial tram system. And so all this stuff here on the ground is all loose. And uh, a lot of it, you know, here's a good piece. It's still real good coarse ore with uh, with a lot of sulfides in there, and so that's the that's the good stuff. So we're just hand mucking this out, and uh, and I'm hoping to get about a ton to a ton and a half today, and then we'll take it down and we'll crush it down in our demo system down below with our one ton per hour turnkey system. sticky spots there but um, this is just a two by four cart that I made and we're using the existing rail and I just got a couple of Teflon sliders underneath but let me get these buckets off and you can take a look. So you can see the rail we're using here it's just in place and then this this Teflon Let's it slide real easy, and it's pretty abrasion resistant. 
And it's a lot easier than wheels or a car or anything like that that's going to freeze up or rust up in the off season. Um, but yeah, so far we've done, I don't know, three or four trips with this thing and it seems to be getting worn in a little bit and getting in the groove. But now we got over here, this is uh, just a little box I made with the same idea. It's got a two by four down the middle to ride in this groove and the rail. And then this, this black Teflon for sliders. And so, if this works right. There's one. There's two buckets. And then I got a rope going up the rail. So I'll go outside in the portal. And I'll pull this up, and then I'll put a hook a bucket on, and send it down to the truck. There it goes. Hopefully the bucket isn't dumped out. Good. Okay. All right, so we got it pulled up here. There's a couple little spots where it sticks, so we're gonna have to do a little maintenance on our rail. Um, but I brought one bucket up, so I'm gonna hook it on the on the uh, hook now. I'll pull this back down. We'll put another bucket in, and then as that one bucket goes down to the truck, it'll help pull this one up the rail. All right, so we improved our system. We got a little tower to get our cable up a little higher. Now I can just send this bucket down to the truck nice and easy. All right, we've got our bags down now, and we're back at the shop. I've actually got two bags. Uh, I figure we got about 1,500 pounds, maybe 2,000 pounds altogether. Uh, and you can see here, it's it's mostly quartz. Uh, we didn't get very much wall rock, which is good because you don't want to dilute your stuff. Uh, but you can, I broke up a couple pieces here, and let's see if we can get this to focus. You can see a lot of this stuff has quite a bit of sulfides here, big blobs of sulfides, so. Lots of metal, lots of mineralization, and uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to run this stuff today, but first we got to uh, go change the hammers in the hammer mill. So I'll video that and give you guys a little tutorial on uh, hammers, hammer wear, and uh, kind of how the machine works. So let's do that. go do that next, and then we'll run the sample and see how much gold we get. Here's our 16 by 12 hammer mill that'll do around one ton per hour of ore. And let me get up here so we can take a look. But I gotta change the hammers, and so I gotta take these bolts off here, all the way around this flange on both sides, and then the whole top half of the hammer mill is gonna come off. But we've added, probably since I did a, a video on our hammer mills, we've added some water injectors in the sides here, one here and one on the other side there. And we've added uh, the, to the side plates that hold the hammer pins in, you'll see a lot better when I open the lid. Uh, we've added spokes that come out like this that act like a fan. And so as we inject water in here, it sprays water up all around the edge of the hammer mill. 
and keeps the material pushed towards the middle of the hammer mill. So you have uh, less wear on the hammers on the outside edge, really evens out the wear, injects more water, and uh, you can actually process quite a bit more. And it uh, crushes, and there's a screen that runs on the bottom here, and it runs down here onto the shaker table. All right, guys, so here's the inside. We've taken the lid off. And you can see our hammers here are getting pretty worn down. They're quite a bit shorter. It might be hard to see in this light. Um, but they're, they're pretty short, and they've got this little knife edge on them. And uh, you can see here, there's a lot of material left in the mill from when we were running last. And what happens is as these ha hammers get shorter, the space between the screen right here and the hammer increases, and it allows a lot more material to build up in there. And that reduces the throughput of the hammer mill and also makes it really inefficient. A brand new hammer comes within a quarter inch, whoops, a quarter inch of the screen. So these hammers have worn down probably close to about an inch now. We've run 20 tons of material and it's all been really hard abrasive quartz. And we have reports from different customers that uh, if you're running really abrasive stuff, the hammers last in the 20 to 30 ton range. And uh, we have some customers that are talking about their hammers last 100 or 150 tons before they need to change them. So it really depends on the hardness of your material for uh, the hammer change or hammer wear rate. But uh, at the high end, you're probably looking at $50 a ton to process. And at the low end, you're looking at under, under 20 probably or less. You can take a look here. Here's the screen, the little bit that's exposed here. There's the laser cut slots. This is a 0.8 millimeter laser cut slot. And like I was mentioning earlier, the material is just building up down on the screen. Even after uh, the last run, when we stop running, we let the run the mill run empty for a couple minutes and keep the water flowing through to try and flush out all the material. But uh, as you can see, the hammers are so short now that the material can't get flushed out of the screen just because the hammers don't come across and clean them out. So, uh, And then another quick thing while we're here is these are those side plates I mentioned. And these hold the pins in that hold the hammers on. And these are those spokes that come out. And the new ones actually come out about, a, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so past the side plate. And uh, as the water gets injected right here, it flings the water out and up the side. So the hammers here on the edge, they're a little bit more worn on this edge. There's one in the middle. But uh, before we injected water, this hammer would come way in, wear way down on the edge, and this one would still be fat. So it's really improved the wear of the outside hammers. And I think it helps flush the mill and uh, keeps the material moving. So anyway, there's a, there's a look inside. I'll go get some uh, hammers and I'll show you how to, how to replace these, these hammers. We're gonna take off these nuts here, pull off these side plates, pull the pin through, the hammers are all gonna come out and then I'll just put uh, newer hammers on. Okay, I've got the side plates off both sides, uh, here and here, and I'm just using the hammer to tap the pin out. And I can grab it with some pliers or channel locks. And I'll just pull the pin out and then take the hammers out. All right, guys, here's the old hammers I just took out of the mill. And here's a hammer that has about five tons of abrasive quartz wear on it. And it's, it's come down about an eighth of an inch. Not very far, but it's starting to round on this corner. And rather than putting brand new hammers in, I wanted to... Uh, show you guys uh, this, illustrate this point, is as they start to wear down on this side and it's not quite ready, uh, you can flip the hammers over. So you can turn them around and then make this side the leading edge that does the crushing and it'll wear this way across the hammer and you'll get a little bit longer life out of them. But you can see when I put the hammers roughly over the top of each other, just turn them so they're apples and apples here, you can see there's uh, at least an inch that we've lost on the length of this hammer I just took out. So it was getting pretty close to time to change those hammers. You might have been able to flip them over and get another three to five tons out of them. Um, 
but uh, but we'll get them changed here and with these slightly used hammers and then here are the side plates I took out and then our new side plates you can see they come about uh, three quarters of an inch past the plate so these wear off and actually these are probably still just fine to use uh, but since I had the mill off I just figured put put some of these guys on and they're they're new and then we won't have to worry about it so I'll get these 20 hammers put in the mill and the four new side plates and I'll show you what it looks like after they're changed okay so putting the hammers back in you put the hammer in you push the pin through until it catches on the next plate and then you can put another hammer in there get it kind of lined up and push that pin through and you just push all the way across and, and put the hammers in the pin has hardly any wear on it it's not rounded or anything there and so you just push the pins back in and you can reuse the pins a long long time uh, and then the hammer mill let me back up so you get some reference here the hammer mill spins this way so the rock gets thrown up against the back of the hammer mill bang 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 and then gets down into the screen and so I put the tallest edge of the hammer on the leading edge of the swing so it's going to get the most wear out of this side as it bashes the rock up into the lid once it's on. Okay we got all our hammers changed and as you can see they come very very close to the screen now. The last ones were down down in here somewhere. Uh, but two things I forgot to mention is uh, because there was so much material built up down in the mill on the screen I had to pull all that stuff out because the hammers are so much longer that uh, you can't get it started unless you get all that junk out of there and so here I just put it down on the shaker table tray it's probably three or four gallons worth of stuff there and you really really want to make sure that when you pull that stuff out you pan it or you uh, run it on a sluice or a shaker table or whatever because if there's any gold that won't fit through the screen it's going to be down here in this stuff and so you don't want to be throwing out any of your big gold so always run that through a concentrator of some kind and then uh, we also have a rubber, a rubber gasket here that goes around the, the, where the two flanges meet so that the water doesn't leak out and seep out between the two flanges. This rubber clamps down and makes a seal. And then the side plates suck the air in through where the, let's see if I can get this on video, in, in through where the shaft goes through the, the case here, sucks in air, draws the air and the water up the side plate and into the, into the case of the mill, into the head when it's running. Um, but yeah, so we got everything changed. Let me put the top back on and then we'll get running our sample. All right guys, here's our second bag. Uh, I'm gonna take both the bags and we're gonna run them through our one ton per hour turnkey system here. It starts with the jaw crusher module. We're gonna put all, both bags into that hopper. The hopper vibrates down through our eight by 12 inch jaw crusher. Comes out this conveyor belt here into this uh, fine ore feeder. There's a little magnetic feeder on the bottom here that vibrates and evenly feeds the material out onto this conveyor belt. Goes up into our hammer mill, crushes it down to 0.8 millimeter minus and down onto our shaker table. The high grade number one and the high grade number two come down into these two little buckets here. The number three middlings comes down into this white bucket and the number four tailings goes in here where the larger material that's about 200 to 300 mesh and larger settles out and gets augered up this screw into that uh, bin back there. And then only the very fine stuff, the two and 300 mesh minus and all the water get recirculated down through this holding basin here. And one more thing I wanted to mention here, uh, a lot of people ask us, uh, we, we manufacture all this equipment and sell it. So if you're looking to uh, get into the gold processing or gold mining industry, uh, let us know. And uh, you can visit our website at mbmmllc.com. And uh, you can find our contact information there. Give us a call and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. So we'll get the system going and we'll watch uh, hopefully quite a bit of gold come across that table. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, here's our number one off the shaker table, and this is our number two high grade. Uh, the number one has hardly anything in there. It wouldn't take hardly anything to pan that out. Uh, the number two has a little bit more. But uh, what I've done in the past is I've uh, panned out the gold and I've wrung it out in a, in a blue rag and then cupelled it directly. And this time I'm going to uh, probably just put the number one in a pan and then uh, I'll pan down the number two some. And we'll get a couple, three or four hundred grams of the concentrates. Once I pan the number two down, I'll pan off a bunch of the junk. And then I can smelt those. I'll mix them together and then just do one big smelt and we'll get all the gold. And then our little button at the bottom of the smelt, we can cupel and recover our precious metals. All right, so I've panned it down. That's, that's what I'm going to leave there. I don't know how much it weighs yet. Uh, but now I'm going to transfer it into a stainless steel container and we'll dry it out over our furnace and get it all dried and then we'll mix up some flux and smelt it down. All right, we've got our stuff all dried out. I'm gonna take just a simple cow magnet in a bag and I'm gonna run it over and see without picking up any iron or steel and just get that out of there. It's not, it really just gets in the way everything when you're smelting and uh, there's, there's quite a bit in there. So let me run the magnet over a couple more times, grab whatever steel I can get. You want to put it in a pan and make sure you pan it out to make sure you don't lose any gold or gold doesn't get sucked up on a piece of steel or something. Um, but usually you can get, get rid of all this junk and, and it's stuff you just don't have to smelt down and, and deal with. All right, guys, we got her down to about 100 grams. Uh, so I'm going to do 75 grams of soda ash, 25 grams of borax, and about 20 grams of uh, ammonium nitrate. And I'm going to add uh, a chunk of steel rod in. And I'm going to put it in here in this crucible. We'll fire it up and uh, pour it into our cone mold, and then we'll cupel it. We got her all mixed up. There's our three quarters of a ton or so, concentrated down to about 100 grams. And uh, now we'll get it moved over here to our furnace. So put it right in there. Put the top on, and we'll start smelting her down. All right, guys, there's our little pour. It's cooled down some now. Knock it out of there. And there's our, there's our little button there in the bottom. I'm going to let it cool down some more and then uh, knock it off there. But, man, that's, that's pretty big. All right, guys, here's our little cone. It's, uh, it's really, really heavy. Um, so that's a good sign. So I think there's quite a bit of gold in there. And so we got it in this little cupel. We'll put it in our furnace, heat it up, melt it, start to oxidize those base metals. They'll be absorbed into the cupel and we'll be left with our precious metal button in the bottom. Okay, let's pull our cupel out of here, see what we got.
Cool. We'll get it cooled down and see what she looks like. Here's our little piece after it's been cooled down. And the finish on it isn't great, but uh, it's what we got. So just shy of 16 grams. And uh, I figured we we're doing somewhere between two thirds and three quarters of a ton. And so what's that, about 20 grams a ton or so? So that's pretty good. That's, uh, that's definitely worth going back up there and getting some more of that stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments about the equipment you saw today, give us a call or send us an email and you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.